Hey everyone, Hayden here, VK7HH for Ham Radio DX, and today we're out at Richard VK7ZBX's uh, place. We're going to be doing some 10 gigahertz EME uh, contacts using Rex VK7MO's uh, EME system. And uh, today's contact is going to be with OK2AQ OK in the Czech Republic. So uh, we're just uh, set up here. We're going to put uh, the uh, the 10 gig system up and uh, pointing out. Uh, out this way, where the uh, the moon the moon's currently up uh, up here at the moment, but uh, as the moon sets, it will be in that dire uh, direction towards uh, Europe. So, uh, hopefully, we can make contact, and we'll see how we go. Oh, you get a level. Level as we can. Yep. Very important. Why won't that go on? <laughs> How can something so simple be so confusing? Ah, there we go. Connected properly. Don't use that as a thoroughfare. Trip over. So the IF radio of choice is the IC9700. It is. Okay, so we should be just about ready to do a bit of a power up. I probably should just go get a screwdriver so I so for those that are um, not familiar with how uh, these systems work with transverters and things like that, basically we've got an IF radio. This radio operates on two meters and will put out a very small amount of power, which will then go into uh, the transverter, which is mounted on the back of this dish, um, which only requires, as I said, a very small amount of power from the IF radio. And then that converts it up to the frequency that we want, which in this case is 10 gigahertz. So all the magic happens in the transverter box. We've got a GPS, so the GPS will provide a reference for the radio, and it will also lock the transverter on frequency as well, so that uh, the, uh, the frequency is accurate, so that we're not trying to find uh, each other at either end. So, uh, so what what are you doing right at the moment, okay, Richard? So I'm spin the antenna around. Hold on a minute. I'll get the mic close to you. Okay. So basically, I need to calibrate um, to a known location, yep. which uh, on top of Cove Hill is a nice little white hut. Yep. Which in this location exa is exactly 232.2 degrees. And that'll allow you to find the so moon later on. That's right. So. Yep. At the moment, we can see the moon, but I guarantee you, when we try to find it, we won't. So. Yeah, it'd be behind cloud or. Sure. Yeah. Something like that. It's always the way. When you're turning, so you're turning it around now towards Cove Hill. Yep. Once you get close, you'll be looking through the site here. Through the through the, the gun scope. Yep. And the gun scope has been um, calibrated so that it's pointing where the dish is pointing. So we do that by by aiming the dish at the sun and and watching for max like tuning for maximum noise. So we go backwards and forwards across the sun to get the maximum noise. Then while we're getting maximum noise, we then tune the gun scope so that the crosshairs are on the sun, of course being very careful to slip a welding lens. Yeah, I was going to say that, make sure that you don't look at the sun Normally directly. you make that mistake once and then with your good eye. <laughs> yeah, you've got one good eye left. The golden rule is to, to be able to work the moon, first you need to be able to point See the, the moon. moon. <laughs> and then you need to be on the right frequency. And nearly everything after that is not so bad. Well, I was just saying earlier that the reason that we GPS lock everything is to make sure that we're on frequency and of course the other end is on frequency as well and then that at least takes one variable away. That's right, you, you can end up um, within one or two hertz at 10 gigs. Mm. Which... And in the software, in WSJT, in the software that we're using, if you're uh, maybe at 10 gigahertz, obviously it's quite high, if you're a couple of kilohertz out you won't see each other. It's very weak as well so That's you won't exactly see each right. other on the waterfall. That's it. And because of the Doppler shift is is coming up be up to like four kilohertz so that's the, the proverbial country mile. Now your computer adjusts for Doppler as well? It does. Yep so it'll adjust the radio for that okay. automatically. Okay so to start with we have uh, the 9700 radio of choice um, which 
just need to make sure, that's always a good thing to check, is the power. Just make sure that the power is set to 1%. 1 watt, yep. Yeah. So, because Rex would be very unhappy if I blew up his transverter. Um, so the radio is under computer control from WSJ2. Yep. And currently it's tracking the Doppler on the moon, so it's maintaining a constant frequency on the moon of um, 10368.2. Yep, because as, as the moon moves, the frequency will change, so we've got to track that. Yep. Okay, so the, um, the WSJT is also obviously listening to the, to the sound. It's connected to the radio via its internal sound card, so that's the, the audio that you can see sort of coming through there on the waterfall. It's just the noise. Yep. Um, and because the computer screen is quite small, there's another very important bit of software that we use, which is the HB9Q logger, which is uh, the ability to sort of um, keep track of who's about and who's yep. attempting to make a contact, and if there's any dramas, and it's too hard to do it on the same screen, so I just have, normally have another computer that basically runs the logger, so you can keep track of who's who's on and who's about. All right. So the components of the, of the system, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, there's basically a uh, a 3 centimeter or 10 gigahertz transverter made by Kuhn that's sitting on the bottom here. Um, there is, on this side here, there's there's a preamplifier, uh, 10 gigahertz uh, preamplifier. Now, it's, this is a little bit unusual because instead of using SMA connectors at 10 gigahertz, this uses um, a WR95 waveguide. So, instead of having a, um, a relay to change from transmit to receive, effectively, it's, it's a waveguide switch. So on this side of the waveguide switch is, is, is the preamplifier for receive. On, on this side is the transmit side. So sitting there is a very nice bit of kit, which is a 60 watt amplifier for, for 10 gigs. So basically about two watts comes out of the, the transverter uh, and becomes 60 watts. And it's almost no loss because it's come straight out the end of the amplifier into the waveguide switch. Um, in here, there's a bit of sequencing. Uh, and there's a bit of safety interlocking through the contacts in the waveguide switch so when that's activated um, when it goes to the transmit position there's a set of contacts closed so they are utilized to make sure that the the power can be only applied to the PA when the waveguide switch is in the in the transmit position yep, and we've got DC uh, amp metering here and fusing and all that sort of thing on this front panel and um, mentioned about the scope, but we've also got elevation uh, um, inclinometer. Inclinometer. I was yeah. trying to think of the word <laughs> inclinometer, and uh, that then allows you to make sure that you've got the elevation correct, correct. on the dish to, to the moon. And there's one there that's mounted at 90 degrees. So when you when you turn the unit around 90 degrees to do um, vertical polarization, um, you've got an inclinometer there that's already sort of set up and calibrated. Yep, and these dishes, these were um, X commercial dishes already for 10 gigs, so they were just plug and play basically. Exactly right. Yeah, look, look the um, the feed and everything was was pretty much tuned to be resonant on. I think they were on 10.5 gigs, and we're using 10.368, so it's it's perfect. Pretty close. Yep. Okay, so it's a couple of hours later, and uh, we're almost ready for the contact. We're still uh, about 20 minutes away from uh, the scheduled start time, and uh, move the dish to where the uh, the moon is you can't quite see it through the through the clouds it's uh, still a bit difficult to see but um, we're all set anyway and, and ready to go so uh, WSJT's uh, running Let's see if we make contact now transmitting 1000 hertz tone Drawing nearly 20 amps. Uh, it's actually been recalibrated, that's 28 amps. Steve, keep having a look just in case we can see it. <laughs> So we're just trying the um, trying the contact with OK2AQ, OK and uh, you can see we're sending. He's he's receiving us okay, but uh, we're not receiving him just yet. So we've just been adjusting the dish slowly as uh, as the moon starts to set. But uh, at the moment, yeah, we're not hearing him. So so uh, we're still trying 
to uh, make contact. He's he's hearing us okay, but uh, we're not hearing him at the moment. So um, we're sort of getting a couple of traces every now and then, but uh, it's been adjusting the uh, the elevation and the azimuth. What are we at now? Three hundred and five. So we set the dial to 305 and look through the scope here. And what was it, sorry? 6.2. Unfortunately, there's cloud cover, so we can't see the moon, although it might be clear. No, it's not. So um, we can't see the moon. We know that we're on it because he's hearing us. So um, yeah, it's uh, interesting. This system has been tested between VK7 ZBX and VK7 MO who only live about 20 kilometres apart from one another and uh, they make contact over 300, no total was 700,000 kilometres uh, using, oh you've got one, here we go, you've got a decode minus 30, minus 23? Yeah, wow. Okay, we're in business and I think it's a zero decode as well so you can see the time is 2.5 seconds so we know that it's legit off the moon minus 23 so that's popped up out of nowhere yeah. after trying for about an hour <laughs> you might want to let him know too so that he keeps transmitting and uh, what are we at we're at 304 and a half and six degrees so it's I've got to keep adjusting this another thing to mention too this thing, this uh, system puts out 60 watts on 10 gigs, so we don't stand in front of the dish when it's transmitting. So, uh, <laughs> 60 watt, uh, 60 watts at 10 gigs is quite a lot of power. So, and into a, into a dish such as that, there's quite a bit of gain. Oh. Nah, no decode. Interesting. Where are we at with the moon? The, uh, you'll notice that some of the trees are starting to get in the way too of uh, where the dish is, uh, the dish is angled, so um, the moon's quite low. And unlike on, um, if you're working two meters EME or 70 centimeters EME, you can make use of the ground for ground gain, whereas gain. at 10 gigs, you, you don't, you. it works, yeah, it's, it's worse. So you end up getting, uh, you end up getting ground noise, so. It's much better to be pointing your dish up into the sky towards the moon. Oh, well, we uh, we tried. We certainly gave it a crack. We got one uh, one decode. One decode, an AP with an AP of three. One decode and minus twenty three. Minus twenty three. So he's hearing us at minus. Very sorry because you're minus twenty one. So you will probably decode. It. So anyway, that, uh, that that's that's some of the joys and some of the. Uh, the highs and the lows of 10 gig EME. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but uh, it's definitely worth the challenge. Gave so, a crack. yeah. All right, guys, thanks for watching.